Well, joining us today is Dan Dix from Press for Truth, and he's produced a lot of documentary films that we carry at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, the most recent one is The Turning Point. Uh, it was about the 2012 Bilderberg in Virginia. We've also got the Toronto hearings on 9-11. That was, I think, about 2011 that you did that, didn't you, mm -hmm. Dan? Then uh, Into the Fire, which is a story about the uh, G20 in Toronto. And then United We Fall, which is about the North American Union. So you've got quite a bit of uh, variety here, Dan. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for thank having you. me. Tell us a little bit about Press for Truth. That's your organization that you've got on your, your website as well as your documentaries. So. Yeah, Press for Truth is an independent uh, media outlet that I started back in 2006. Uh, basically just covering events that the mainstream media is often fails to report on. Uh, so I just began covering uh, various events like protests and started mm -hmm. coming across some very interesting protests and finding out, you know, riot footage and different kinds of uh, rallies. Uh, so it just began as documenting uh, certain events just to put videos out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that eventually grew into making full-length, feature-length documentary films uh, eventually. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, in a nutshell. Press for Truth is uh, just me and a couple other guys basically um, covering everything we can from the Canadian perspective. Mm -hmm. I find sometimes that's not necessarily getting covered enough, so I, I tend to focus on that. It's not exclusively uh, for Canadians, but um, mm -hmm. that's some, somewhat of the, the focus there with Press for Truth. And I noticed that we had, we were talking just before we started the interview, uh, several short documentaries submitted for Operation Paul Revere from Andrew Demeter, and he always had Press for Truth there. So how, how's he associated with your organization? Those were good documentaries. They did. Yeah, yeah. Andrew uh, Demeter is doing great work, a young 15-year-old. Uh, really? Only 15? 15, 15 wow. years old. Wow. Uh, doing amazing Super. stuff. Yes. Um, so I put out a call a while back about bringing on some correspondence, and I saw that Andrew was doing great work, so I wanted to get him involved with what I'm doing. Uh, so he's been putting together some excellent uh, video reports uh, Good, for yeah. Press for Truth. He covered a variety of topics. Now, your stuff seems to be kind of more focused on globalism and the global elites. Uh. Globalization, um, the whole uh, New World Order agenda, mm -hmm. basically, is mm -hmm. what we focus on, which encompasses a whole lot of things. Uh, that's why we went to cover the Bilderberg. I, first, I, I covered Bilderberg three times now. Uh, first time was back in 2006. And then we did it again in Chantilly, and then again uh, this year in, in London. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we focus on uh, organizations like that as well, obviously, and um, put, put together the turning point to, to show what's going on with those guys. Good. Now, one of the ones I'm interested in here, too, that I haven't seen is the Toronto hearings on 9-11. Uh, you present a lot of evidence to a panel of experts. Uh, I was just talking to a fellow uh, in the UK, Tony Rook, who's looking to do that. His, his background, his father was a police officer. Mm. And so he did a documentary about a police officer who woke up to 9-11. And what happened to him, basically he got booted out of the police uh, off, uh, service. But he wanted to present that evidence to police and to judges because it's been his experience that a lot of them who are uh, just ordinary, honest cops, once they're presented with the evidence, they're absolutely astounded because mm -hmm. they just haven't seen it. What, what was your experience with Toronto 9-11? What kind of panel of experts did you have that you were presenting that to? Well, this was a four-day event um, where there were expert eyewitnesses, uh, architects, engineers, uh, scientists who were presenting their information to uh, a whole panel. Um, uh, 10 years, 11 years at that point of research have gone into these guys' work and it was a four-day event and we um, documented the entire thing and I got an opportunity to interview all of the people who were speaking there. So this is not so much a documentary, it's a six-hour long informational DVD package basically hmm. of kind of all the latest information on what's going on with... All different disciplines. All different disciplines of, of people studying 9-11 for the past uh, 11 years, basically. Um, so it was, a, like I said, a four-day event. We managed to condense it all down to six hours. So that particular DVD is just jam-packed with the latest info on all the stuff going on with 9-11. And it's amazing because as I go through it, everybody's got some level of expertise. Uh, even if they don't have a level of expertise, they've seen building demolitions before. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> they can also understand, you know, two planes, three buildings, that doesn't add up. Yeah. Right? But it's interesting to see people who have expertise in a particular area. I know that um, Gore Vidal was talking about how his father had set up the 
uh, NORAD defense system right. uh, in the early days, and that was the first thing that clicked with him. So whatever your level of ex expertise, there were so many different levels that people would look at it and say, that's just total BS. That just can't happen that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes we'll have um, people who, when this is sensitive, who'll say, well, I was there, you know, you weren't. And like you said, you don't mm -hmm. necessarily have to have, have been there to be able to study this event and to know that the official story just simply does not add up. And mm -hmm. that's another thing about the DVD is there, we left speculation at, at the door. There's no, it's just pure facts. Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, kind of coming from a scientific kind of a stance. So mm -hmm. uh, we left opinion and um, that sort of thing at the door. And, and, just and being there doesn't really do anything. I mean, you know, being an eyewitness to it, you can see the plane crash into the building. But when you have a pilot who has flown these planes for decades, who has instructed people on how to fly these planes for decades, when he says that you can't control a plane at that altitude, at that speed, that's, that's important. That's something that even if you're an eyewitness to it, you don't know that when you first see that. That's something that comes out over a period of time as experts come forth and say, you know, this shit really doesn't add up. That's right. That's right. And it's the same with all the demolition experts mm -hmm. um, who can see that um, these, th this falls in line with controlled demolitions. Mm -hmm. um, and you had people on the very day saying over and over again, wow, that just looked like a controlled demolition of a building. You had news anchors who were saying that. Uh, you, you could see that. So, well, that, that's very interesting. Now, you're here today in studio because you're working on another documentary. Yes. You're working on the next InfoWars documentary, and you've been traveling all over the country doing, getting B-roll footage. Tell us a little bit about that. That's right. Yeah, I've been uh, helping out, Alex, with uh, the Obama deception part two. Um, so I've been going to a number of uh, states just covering uh, some stuff in Washington, D.C., some stuff in New York. Uh, we were out to uh, Philadelphia and uh, Mount Vernon in Virginia and um, basically just shooting B-roll for the film. And so now I'm here in Austin, Texas to uh, sit down with you guys for a couple days to kind of help edit the shots together of all the stuff that we I mean, it heard. sounds like fun. It sounds like you're having a, uh, a great vacation, except people who haven't shot in these locations don't know the kind of hassles that you get from the authorities and from the, the powers that be. Tell us a little bit about some of that. I'm sure you've had. It's far from a vacation. We've been putting in 14, 15 hour days of filming. Yeah. Uh, definitely getting hassled. Uh, a good example is in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. uh, we'd often get um, hassled about having a tripod. And, uh, you know, when we'd end up talking to these police officers, we'd eventually um, realize that if we collapsed the three legs together into a monopod, they'd say, well, that's okay. And the one police officer even said to me, well, you know, that's because it's not going to be as steady as a shot. It's not going to be as crisp and as smooth <laughs> um, because then they know uh, that they should be selling you a permit for it. But yeah, it's right. all ridiculous. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Well, there's ways around that. You know, they even have the monopods now with the little feet that come out. So exactly. yeah, I, how does that fall? Is that a tripod or is that not a tripod? Exactly. It's kind of micromanagement of the rules. Uh, what about uh, New York? Bloomberg land. Yeah, yeah, New York. We, we ran into a couple of issues. We were down at the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, one, at one moment, we were shooting uh, the, the stock ticker going by, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the officers came up to us and said, you know, this is all copywritten. <laughs> and we said, what is? And he said, all of this, it's a brand, it's copywritten. Uh, we said, the building? He said, yeah, the building, all of it. Uh, we have robots that scan the internet for this kind of footage, and if we find this, you know, and find that you're using it, um, yeah. then uh, you could get in trouble. And we basically just said, well, good luck with that. Well, that's what you'd expect, I guess, from a Wall Street representative. They think they own the world. So <laughs> that's they're it. trying to pull every string and every underhanded thing they can to try to own the world. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting issue about copyright. You know, there, there is, it's an issue of balance, isn't it? You know, because we want everybody's work to be respected, but then it gets to the point where it gets so overreaching. I mean, even if you look at copyrights for programs. You've mm -hmm. got absurd copyright issues that were filed that say, you know, copyright for displaying a picture on a phone. Yeah. Something that doesn't have anything to do mm -hmm. with any technological innovation. Yeah. And the copyrights that they're, they're putting on things that you can shoot mm -hmm. are pretty much just that absurd. I mean, the fact that you can walk in public and see something, the fact that Google Earth can take a shot of it, yeah. yeah, how does that come into it? Well, you got Google Street View going around getting all this yeah. stuff, putting Street it all View. out on the internet mm -hmm. anyways. It's all available. Right. Um, it's not like we're out there doing reconnaissance. If, if this is what we're doing, we just go online. Plus, not mm -hmm. to mention the fact that there's tourists all over the place yeah. in these Constantly areas. snapping. That's right. Constantly taking pictures, constantly yeah. snapping. So. so a lot of that's just intimidation. 
pure intimidation. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, Dan, it's great meeting you and talking to you, and we really look forward to seeing your work incorporated into Obama Deception 2. These are great documentaries that you put out. At United We Fall, about the North American Union. We've got The Turning Point, which is the 2012 Bilderberg in Chantilly, Virginia. We have the Toronto hearings on 9-11, expert panels reviewing the evidence, and Into the Fire, which is about the G20 Toronto meeting. Well, Dan, how can people reach you and get to your website, give out that information? Anything you want to tell us about Twitter? Uh, yeah, all this is available on my, my main flagship site, which is pressfortruth.ca. Uh, I do a lot of YouTube videos as well as documentary films. They all go there. I also have a subscription-based website for people who want to support the work that I'm doing right, that's at PressForTruth.tv, where all of these films are available in high quality for download. And then, of course, if anybody wants to uh, get direct to it uh, firsthand, there's my YouTube channel, uh, which is YouTube.com uh, slash Weaving Spider. Okay, great. Weaving Spider. Yeah. Okay, that's, great. That's straight from Bohemian Grove. Learned that from Alex. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, great work, Dan. It's great meeting you. Thank you. That's it for tonight. We'll be back at a 7 p.m. Central tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.